So again, we're going over beginning unit two right now. We talked about Express as a web framework and the author defines a web framework as a predefined application structure and a library of development tools. In other words, it's a bunch of stuff designed to make your life easier. We also talked a little bit about MVC model view controller. The model part is giving structure to the data. The view part is displaying the data and the controller is handling the request to interact with the data. So in this unit chapter eight, as it says, introduces Express and it shows how to configure a new node application. We've already done some of that stuff as we started. All right. Unit or lesson nine on the next page covers routing with Express. Most of the stuff that's in there, you already know. It's just putting it someplace else and referring to it in a little bit of a different way. They also introduce MVC in this chapter. Chapter 10, they're going to talk about layouts. Now, I don't want to confuse you, all right? But there, there are several different tools that you can use when you work with these layouts. Paul is having his people use a tool that's called Mustache. I'm going to have you use one that's called um, EJS for Embedded JavaScript. They're virtually identical, except the, one, the tool that we're going to use, we're going to put extra code inside of. It'll, it'll begin with a less than sign followed by a percent sign. Then when we're done, it'll end with a percent sign followed by a greater than sign. You do it virtually the same way in handlebars and mustache, but you use three curly braces instead of a, you know, a less than sign, etc. You use three curly braces, but it, it pretty much works the same way. So that's what chapter 10 will be about. And chapter 11 will show how to handle errors. Then again, chapter 12 is the capstone. All right. All right. I mentioned getting. Yeah, you basically you have to develop a comfort level with Express. Now, they're going to say something, just so you know, in here at the end. It's either in Chapter 8 or 9. I don't remember. Express also has a tool called a generator. And what that'll do is a lot of the stuff we're going to do by hand, it'll do it for you automatically. But the it, it also creates some boilerplate code that you typically don't need. So you got to go in and kind of clean it up, whatever. But it's recommended that when you're learning, you don't do it that way. You do it by hand so you, figure, you can figure out what's going on. All right. So chapter 8, page 87. It says, by the end of this lesson, you'll know where to begin with web frameworks and how to use Express.js, which is just one example of a web framework. Express.js is also called, it's also known as, as a piece of middleware. All right, middleware is one word, and it's a kind of an important concept for you to at least understand that if, if you look at it, that when we use HTTP, that's the machine. Okay, it's sending a response. I'm sorry, it's, it's, we're sending a request. It's giving us a response, etc. Between us and the computer is middleware, and the, basically that's allowing the conversation to take place. Express is an example of middleware. It's probably amongst the most well-known middleware. Later on in the book, you'll learn how to write your own middleware. In fact, I think it's even in this section. All right. Okay. So if you turn to the next page and you look on page 88, I'm not going to talk about any of these. But the author does talk about Koa, Hoppy. I think I heard it pronounced Hoppy and Happy. It doesn't matter. Sales and total. All of them are different JavaScript frameworks. Okay. Express is the one that's been around the longest. It's 10 years old. It's the most well known and it's probably the easiest to learn. But the author is saying that if he had his druthers, he would almost rather teach you total first because it's more powerful. That said, with more power comes more complexity. So that's why he's not showing you that in this book. All right. Okay. So those are the other frameworks. As they mention underneath that, the author says, ultimately, a framework is intended to help you overcome some common development challenges. It'll do some of the work for you automatically. It'll help set things up, etc. You know, bottom of that bottom paragraph on that page, a web framework is designed to offer some of the common tools used in web development. 
It provides methods and modules to assist with handling routes, serving dynamic and static content, connecting to databases, etc. We'll get into some of that in this section. You've already been able to go and bring up static stuff. You brought up images, well, sort of. You, you brought up HTML, all right? You brought up CSS, etc. But what gets introduced in here is you can also use Express with dynamic content. That's where the handlebars and the embedded JavaScript comes in. It allows you to actually put JavaScript into your HTML, not using script tags, because that's how you do it on the client side, but doing it here where you're going to have more interactivity. If that doesn't make any sense, it will when we get going. All right. Now, Express does not come, it's not like, uh, like, like some of the other stuff that we've used where it's just available to you right, right away. So if you would, please, um, go, go back to your node or your git bash window and type in npm. In fact, before we even do this, okay, I think you'd agree with this. If we, if we go in, I, I want you to do this. I think it's important. This is the best time to do it anyway. Okay. Um, Open up your package.json file again. In the code? Yeah, in VS Code. What you're going to have in just a minute at the bottom of this, at the bottom of this, is you're going to have um, in your package.json, you're, you're going to come in and you're going to have, when we run this in just a couple minutes, you're going to have um, some more stuff down on the bottom of the screen. All right. Okay. So the first thing that I care about in here is we put that thing in for NodeMon, correct? But we haven't installed NodeMon yet, so we're going to do that right now. So the way that you do that is you type in NodeMon, N-O-D-E-M-O-N -E space, um, I'm sorry, NPM space, install NodeMon but then put in there minus capital D. NPM install NodeMon minus capital D. What that does is it sets NodeMon up as a development tool. If you were to release, you know, if you created this application, you were to release it to the world, you don't want them to be able to use NodeMon. All right. It's, it's something for you to use while you're developing. Okay, so after you've got npm install nodemon minus d, make sure it's a capital D, hit enter. It should take just a minute, and it should come back and tell you that it's put a bunch of stuff in your system. All right. It's, it's because it's a development tool for you to allow you to, to play with the server and stop it and start it, etc. What, what's going to happen is once you put your tool in and you put it out live, it's going to go on an application server someplace. That people aren't going to have the ability to do things with that server anyway. All right, they're using someone else's hardware, for lack of better words. Now, towards the bottom here, it says added 120 packages from 54 contributors. You probably either have the same thing or it should. All right, then down below that it says 10 packages are looking for funding or something like that. Do you see that stuff? One third out of six packages from 11. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Still, it's not a problem either way. Okay. Now, go back and go back into code. And you should see that now you've got two things that are important here. First, you've got a thing called node modules. You see that? We on the left-hand side? Oh, yeah. Okay. If you click the greater than sign, those are all of the different dependencies that you've got for NodeMod. We're going to have even more in just a couple minutes. All right, so you've got those. You can click the arrow again to, you know, basically to, to stop it, for lack of better words. All right, the other one that I want you to open up, the other file that I want you to open up here is package-lock.json. This in here literally has all those dependencies in it. All right, and the reason that that file is important is anybody who ends up using this will be able to tell the versions and stuff that you used. 
All right, I'm just going to stop right there it, as far as that goes because that's fine. Now, if you open up your package.json file again, and you look at the bottom, it should now say dev dependencies. All right, that's good. That means we've successfully added node mod. All right, that's the first thing we wanted to do. Then go back into git bash again. You can clear the screen if you want, but you don't have to. It's up to you. But now we're going to put in here npm install express minus minus save all in lower everything in lowercase npm space install space express space minus minus save no no spaces after the minus minus just minus minus save hit enter again And again, you should have a bunch of packages and stuff that were added. Now we've got Express available to us. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do next, and I'm not exactly doing it in the order that they're mentioning in the book, but it, we pretty much are. If you would bring up bring up a uh, bring up a browser window. And go into it wasn't it because I spelled it wrong. Okay, go out to expressjs.com. One word, expressjs.com. It's an ugly site, it's kind of grayish. All right. It says it's a fast, unopinionated, unopinionated minimalist web framework for Node.js. That's what it is. Notice right below that they tell you how to do the install. It's what I just showed you, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And let's see. Click the on the, on the side where you've got all the menu options near the top. Mm -hmm. Click where it says API reference. Do you see two lines of code there? Var express equal require express and var app equal express. Mm -hmm. Grab those lines, copy them both to your clipboard. Open up your main.js file. You can close the package one if you want to and the package mm -hmm. lock. You don't need those. But open up the main.js file. We're going to do that in a minute, yeah. Um, no. In fact, change both those vars to const, C-O-N-S-T on both. And make sure, because they don't have it right now, they're doing a really bad job with some of this stuff. Put semicolons at the end of each line. So the first line should read const express equal require then in quotes, in, in parentheses, and in quotes, express, semicolon, then const app equals express. What that's doing is it's telling the system in line one to go out to express.js and grab that package and make it available to us. The way that you use that in here is you create a new instance of the package. Not, well, I mean, of express. And what that line two is doing is it's saying, I want a new instance of express. I want you to call it app. You don't have to call it app, but by historically, that's what people use. All right, so let's jump back into our book. The minus minus save flag is explained on the bottom, near the bottom of the page. On the very bottom, what would happen is if you didn't use minus minus save, all right, and this is what the author says, if you upload it to a, a different folder later, it doesn't know to upload express. And since Express is kind of the hallmark of what we're using, that's just the way you do it. All right. And that was, a, I guess, kind of a crummy explanation, but it's the one I'm going to give you. So next page here, page 90, building your first Express.js application. So we've already gone in and done what we need to do to get started. So let's, let's go in. I'll do the same thing as you. Notice there's about... Let, let's go into our main.js, okay? All right, you've already got the two, those two const lines. Let's add another const in here for our port. So const port equal 3,000 with a semicolon at the end. 
and then starting with that app.get, you see that? Yeah. Just type in the rest of the rest of those lines. Just the way they've got them in the book. Let me know when you got it done. Yeah. All right. Save it. All right. Now we're going to see whether or not this, what I want, what I want to show you works. So let me try it on mine first. Open up your Git Bash if you haven't done so already. And from there, type in npm space run space dev, D-E-V. I'm, I'm taking for granted you use the same names I gave you. You'll get some junk that comes up, but if it comes up and it says the Express.js server has started and it's listing on port number 3000, that's good. You don't want to do it like that. Type in right now. Type in just clear your screen. Clear your screen. Here. Type in npm space run space main. Uh, that was the bell wrong. Everything's right except put dev on the end, not main. No, no main. Npm run dev. Um, go go back go back into your uh, yeah that's all yeah no mods one word save it try again clear clear the screen try again now do your up arrow thing on the word that'll run yeah. well I'm not sure how you loaded it before that might be the problem. Type in npm space uh, install space 
no bond, one word, uh, phase, uh, minus capital D. <clears throat> All right, now, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I think we might get out of that. That's no big deal. Now, we're not going to do anything because if you brought it up right now, we don't have. There's no code there. You'd get there. You'd get the standard message that says basically you can't find slash because we didn't put any code in there yet. But that's exactly where they want you to be right here. Okay. Then on page. Um, Oh, okay. We're, we have to do this. Okay. Um, take your... Start over again. Your git bash, minimize that. Bring up a browser window. In your browser window, you've done it before, http colon slash slash localhost colon 3000, hit enter. And it should say hello universe. Now, if... Let, let's assume that we want to change that. We don't want it to be hello universe. We want it to be hello world. You with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go back. Um, go back into Visual Studio Code. And where it's got hello universe, change it to hello world. And save. Go back into your git bash. You should notice that it looks like it started running again. See that? You have so you see how you have two of them there? Mm -hmm. All right. What that means is the server was smart enough to restart itself without you having to do it. So now you're not going to have to do these anymore. Control C, etc. I don't know why they didn't mention it till here. I would have mentioned it right away, but I just I'm trying to follow a book as, as best I can. Now go back again and refresh the screen where it said hello universe. And it should say hello world. Does? Mm. Good. Okay. Page 91 in the book, all, virtually the whole page, is the whole thing I already gave you about using Nodebun. All right. So if you want more than I gave you, you can read the stuff that's in there. All right. Page 92. Working your way around a web framework. If we look at the picture here, that's on the page, it's showing you how Express is between you and your, your code and the HTTP request. Again, it's middleware. All right. They even mentioned in the note under, underneath, middleware can come in smaller packages than Express. Middleware is used for all sorts of stuff. And as I mentioned, you can write your own. All right. Bottom of the page, so bottom of page 92 and going on to page 93 here, the author says, because you're still dealing with HTML methods, the overall interaction between your app and the browser doesn't change much from what we've done earlier. But there's more stuff available to you that you can use. Okay, now they have this thing here, it says these request objects, if you look on page 93. What these do is they provide more stuff, for lack of better words, that you can use. You see where it says params, body, etc.? All right. Params basically will become more important when we get into Chapter 4. What you're going to end up doing is if you ask for something without a parameter, you're going to get everything. So if you ask for a list of users, you aren't going to put a parameter in there. You're just going to ask for the list of users. But if you only want user six, when you ask for that list of users, you'll put in there colon six, which means just show me user number six. All right. Body is basically all the stuff that goes into the body of it. You're going to see that as we go on. URL is the URL that you used. And query, as it says, it's going to allow you to do things with query strings. You'll see that a little bit later. On the bottom of page 93, they talk about query strings. And they show an example right there. 
The query string is everything that comes after that question mark that you see on the bottom of the page. All right, so in this case, there's one attribute, it's called name, and the value of name is John, period. All right. Now, that wasn't much, but that's already the first chapter. Questions on anything? All right, let's jump into the next one then. So this is 9, page 95. Okay, the rest of this unit, it says, is dedicated to exploring express.js functionality and using its convenient methods. So, in this chapter, if you look, we've got four different objectives. Set up routes for the application, respond with data from another module, collect request URL parameters, and move route callbacks to controllers. All right. Very bottom of the page, you got this consider this thing. And if you look at the bottom paragraph, it says once the routes have been set up, you can store some data in separate modules. The idea is to modularize things, not have any routine that's huge, but have a lot of real small routines that you're able to go and, and pick and choose, you know, and, and even, you know, if you create something, you know, you create your own routines to do stuff, put them in other applications. All right. So building routes with JS, all right? So it says right there, in lesson eight, we did our first thing. What, what they want us to do in here is grab that code that you see, that app post. I don't know if you want to copy it or you want to type it in, whatever you want to do, but grab it, go back in, in Visual Studio code, and right up above your listen statement, add that code. Does what I just said make sense? Yeah. All right. Make sure that it's got a, it's got at the end of it, it has a semicolon at the end. Remove that semicolon because otherwise the next line is going to give you an error. Now, save this. All right. Go back into your Git Bash window. Okay. Now you notice a third time it started. Can you see that? All right. Go go to your browser. And now on the end of this, hopefully this is going to work. Oop, it didn't. Well, let's try it like this. I won't get one of you. Oh, this is just so you're aware of this. Go, go ahead and go back into the book. This is different. Everything we've done previously has been an app.post. This, if you look at it, is an app.get. We'll be able to use that if, we, if we're trying, I'm sorry, everything we've done so far has been an app.get. This is an app.post. And we'll be able to post things to the server using this. All right. So this would typically be like for a contact form is what they're saying in here. All right. I don't know why they give you this example because I found it really confusing, but I'm going to use the one they've got. So if you look on the bottom in 9.2, okay, do you see how they've got this app.get that's in here? All right, what I want you to understand is where they've got um, items and it says colon vegetable, that's a placeholder. There's nothing special about vegetable. All right, but I don't know why they use that because it's confusing, at least in my opinion, it is. Now, they want you to create a new project. I don't think you have to do that. But what I'd like you to do is to take that code that you that, that's there in listing 9.2 on the bottom of page 96, that app get, and copy the whole thing to the clipboard, go back into Visual Studio Code, and you've got an app get and an app post, right? Put it... So you've got a new app get there. And again, I believe that at the bottom, I think we can remove that semicolon that's at the end. So no, you put it in between the app get that was there and the app post. You really should keep your gets together if you're going to do it like this and your posts together. That's all I'm trying to do. Get rid of the semicolon at the end. No, leave that one in there. All right. Okay, well, I'm going to see if this is going to work now. So give me a second here.
All right, to get this to work, if you look on the next page, we've already, you know, and you look at 9.3, we've got the port, we've got the app is express, etc. We've got all that stuff. All right, the app get that we have right now, that hello world one, I guess you can get rid of it. So let's just grab that one and make it go bye bye. Now the next one, that's the one we just put in. But there's another line in there that says let veg equal req dot params dot vegetable. So let's put that in and we'll go back and we'll look at it then in just a minute. In the res.send, let's change what that says to what they have in the book here. So back tick. This is the page for the veg. All right. The contact that's in there, I guess we won't need that. I'm not sure why they even had you put that in, but you can leave it in there. It's not going to hurt anything. All right. Yeah, it started again. That's good. Now let's see if this works. Good. All right. Um, if you're not there, go back to where you have your um, browser open mm -hmm. and type in your HTTP colon. You probably don't even need the HTTP colon slash slash. Just type in localhost colon 3000 slash items slash colon. Put anything you want in there. Put your name in there if you want. doesn't matter. And it should say this is the page for colon, like if you put Keegan, colon Keegan. So let's take a look in the book on page 97 because they explain what's going on in there. And it may make sense. It may not make any sense. So let's look at it. All right. What we have in there are what are referred to as route parameters. As it says, they're handy for specifying data objects in the application. When you start saving user accounts to a database, for example, we're, this is what we're going to do. So stuff that's going to be similar to this. All right. Um, and it says this structure is necessary for developing what are called REST applications. Okay. REST is an acronym for represent, rep, representational state transfer. It's the REST APIs that are unit I know it says you learn it in Unit 4. I, I thought it was Unit 6, but it doesn't really matter. All right? We are going to be going over it this week, that unit. All right. So the author says, I talked about how Express.js is a type of middleware as it adds a layer between the request being served and the request being processed. The feature is great, but you may want to create your own middleware. See that? The key takeaway for that is when you create your own middleware, Look on the bottom, the last full paragraph on the bottom of the page. When you write your own middleware, your stuff, not, not Express's stuff, but your own stuff from scratch, the last thing you have to put in there is next, paren, paren, semicolon. What that does is it says, I'm done, go to the next thing. If you don't put that in, it'll hang because it's waiting for some kind of command to do something. All right? So that's what they mention on the bottom of the page. The author says, Next is provided as a way of calling the next function in the request response execution flow. All right. As with HTTP methods, you can create a route with app.use that runs on every request. The difference is you're requiring an initial argument and a callback. That's next. So if you please turn to page 98 and you take a look at what's there on page 98. <coughs> What you'll notice if you look at the example on 9.4, two things. First, notice now when we do this, we've got request, response, and next. Can you see that in the parameters? And you've got next in there, which is it's exactly what I just told you. And if you need more, you can read the warning that's after that. Okay? 
and they're trying to show it to you pictorially on the top of page 99. I want to read to you. All right. Now, they do mention it, or they talk about custom middleware. So typically, custom middleware means it's middleware you create or middleware that is not part of like something that you can load with NPM. Maybe somebody else created it or whatever. All right. So the author mentions halfway down on the page, you can get data from a user two different ways. Either in the body in a post request, that's typically done when you've got a, um, got a form and you've got a submit button on it, okay? Or through the request query string in the URL. We've looked at that already, haven't we? When you, you've got, just, I want to make sure you've got it. So do this. Uh, in your browser, open up a, a something, you know, a blank window in your browser and just go out to Amazon. All right. And in Amazon, go to... Uh, where it's got the, the, the box in the middle that says all, click that and choose books. And then type in CSS, that'll be fine. Any problems with that? Okay, does it show you, mine shows me a, a thing that says CSS virtual visual dictionary, do you see that? Just click on that. All right, and if you look up on the screen right now in your address bar, you'll notice that as you start going and working your way through here, mine says Amazon.com slash CSS Visual Dictionary Greg Sindelik, Sindelikoff or something like that, 198 and a bunch of numbers, but then it's got a question mark. Can you see that? That's the query string, everything that comes after the question mark. So notice it says here keywords equals CSS. All right, so that's the first thing. Okay, then it's got ID equals, and it's got my, it's showing me 160, zero, et cetera, et cetera. The point is, all of that stuff, those are part of a query string, so they're being passed in as query parameters. When you go and you use a get, all of the information that's been passed goes in the form of query parameters like that. When you use a post, because a post is used when you've got information that you don't want to share with people, credit card numbers, passwords, etc. Then with a post, it goes in the headers so you don't see them. All right? All right, you can close that and let's just go back to it, the book. And the author mentions here in the first capstone, we successfully built a form. Yeah, we didn't do much with that, but we're going to see if we can today. So bottom paragraph on the page, express.js makes it easy to retrieve the request body with the body attribute. All right. To assist in reading this, it says you add express.json and express.url encoded. All they're saying is that makes your output that you get from this easier to read. So we can do this. I don't know why we couldn't. Um, if you wanted to, we could put this in. So let's let's go back inside of Visual Studio Code. All right. And we'll keep that app.get in there. That shouldn't hurt anything. Right on in fact, let's do this. We'll do this above the app.get. Okay, so right underneath your const. Let's just type in the stuff they have there. App.use express dot url encoded etc i'm not going to talk i'll let you type you can put all that on one line they i don't know why they show it on multiple lines but they do
Okay, when you're done, don't run it yet. Okay, because you're going to get an error if you do. Let me know when you're done. Try this and see how this works. Okay, let's talk about what the what this means. Okay, so look, bring up your code if you don't have it up. What we're telling the system is, when we do a post, what we want you to show us, what you want to log out, so this should show right in our git bash line, is the body of the query and the actual query itself. And then it should come back and say post successful. Now it says test this code by submitting a post request to http colon slash slash etc using the following curl command. I put that in and I got an error. It says you should see the body logged to your server's console window. And that's what should happen. So I did that, but then when I went back again, it is not there. Just so you know, and, and it's and no, I'm not that flitty and whatever. But the, the thing is, they're having you use curl here. In not very long, what we're going to do is we're going to use a package called Nodemon, and I'm sorry, not Nodemon, Postman. And when we use Postman, you'll never have to use this curl thing. I've had nothing but problems with curl. It doesn't like what I'm trying to do. All right. In fact, I even tried to bring up another window inside of here because I thought maybe that's what they wanted. So I went in and tried to bring up another git bash and I tried to put the command in there. I thought maybe that's what they wanted. So I put in all that stuff. So again, um, 
curl minus minus data double quote first underscore name equal John ampersand last underscore name equal Wexler HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000 and it comes back and it's waiting for more information it doesn't know how to handle that so let's just break this down what we're attempting to do is we're attempting to send two parameters to our request a first name that's got a value of John and a last name that's got a value of Wexler all right like I said why it's not working I guess I should have tried this ahead of time but it, it's not working for me and so chances are at least it's not going to work for you it says you should see the body log to your servers console window so if this had worked in the actual console the thing that's got that the server is running and listing on port 3000 you would have seen what's shown right there all right all right that's fine let's jump to the next part here So I'm on page 101. We'll finish this one up and we'll take a break. So the next thing that's in here, as it says, is using MVC. What we will do, just so you know, starting, I think, in the next chapter already, We've already got a folder that's called Views. If you remember, that's where we put our HTML file, right? All right, we're going to create another folder called Models that we're not going to use at all until we get to the next unit in the book. We're going to have one more folder that we're going to create that's called Controllers. And in there, we're going to put up most of our routing logic is going to go in there. All right, and that's what they're saying here. So they explain here that the MVC architecture has three parts, the views, the models, and the controllers. You can read that yourself, okay? But that's pretty much what I just told you. You can kind of look at it that, you know, again, your views are your HTML, right? Your models are either going to be your databases or whatever types of classes that you write that are going to hold your database data. And your controllers are going to be the, they're the go-between. They, the controller talks to the model, the controller talks to the views. The models and the views don't talk to each other. All right. And on the very bottom then of page 101, the author says, to follow the MVC design pattern, move your callback functions to separate modules that reflect the purposes for those functions. Callback functions for a user account, so in other words, creating a user account, deleting one, modifying one, go into a file called users controller. All right, as in the shown example. So when you look here, this is the way we're going to set this up. All right, so right now, you don't have to do this yet, but right now in our project, what you can see what we'd have to add. We've got the main, we've got the package.json, we don't have a router.js in here right now. We did in the last chapter, if you remember. But and then in public, you already learned in the last section how we add images, JS, and CSS folders. We just learned recently about the views folder. What's new here is the controllers folder that you see in figure 9.2. Okay, and that's pretty much what the author is getting to right here. So he explains here, on the starting on the bottom of page 102, exactly what happens to do this. First, create a controllers folder within your project folder. Create a home controller.js file within it require that so in other words that line that you see there where it says const home controller you see that mm -hmm. that's got to go in your main.js all right don't don't worry about putting it in right now it's it's fine and then move your route callback functions to your home controller all right and what they're doing is basically they're showing you the same kind of picture on page 103 that they went over before but the idea is what they're starting to show you in here is breaking things up. So if you look at the picture, you can see your controllers. Underneath that are your views. 
underneath that are your, are, is your are your models. All right. Finally, the last thing that's mentioned in here, if you turn up to page 104 and you look on the bottom of the page, again, not my intention to read to you here, but if you take a look in there, what the author is saying is there is a tool called Express Generator that will do a lot of this stuff for us. All right? And that's pretty much it for 8 and 9. So let's, it's, I've got, uh, it's a little early. That's fine. I've got 112. Let's take a break. Start up again at about 125, all right? We'll finish the last two chapters. We'll talk about the capstone, and the rest of the period will be yours done, all right?